So why was Sodom and Gomorrah judged according to scripture? The reason I'm bringing this up is because I believe Sodom and Gomorrah was actually t trending on Twitter the other day. And this is the kind of thing that I saw a lot of um, this particular post kind of gives a good example of what a lot of people are saying, uh, at least on Twitter. <laughs> And uh, it says here, Sodom and Gomorrah is trending because right-wing losers don't understand that in the Bible, the city was destroyed because they were greedy and didn't take care of the poor, just like these same right-wing losers. So is that correct? Now, they do actually quote a verse here, Ezekiel 16, 49. It says, now this was the sin of your sister Sodom. She and her daughters were arrogant, overfed, and unconcerned. They did not help the poor and needy. So clearly scripture does point out that this was a problem with Sodom. But is that all that the scripture says? Is that is that the totality and the root reason why God ultimately destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah? That's what I want to take a little bit more of a look at in this video. Now I did like this particular response uh, to a lot of these kinds of tweets, uh, this was something that I saw posted by Ron Hensel, who his account says that he is a PCA elder. And he ha actually has a scripture here, and I don't know if he made this, but he posted it. It's a scripture from Jude verse 7, and it's responding to a lot of these similar kinds of comments like the one I showed you. So for example, here you see on the bottom here, it says this is fake religious talk. Ezekiel 16:49 says Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed for neglecting the poor and being arrogant. These people are destroying the church by lying on God. There was nothing about homosexuality. So I'm not sure what got this trending on Twitter. I have a feeling, I, I think it may have had something to do with a politician referencing Sodom and Gomorrah. But any time in popular culture when someone makes reference to something like this, it can get a lot of reaction. So this PCA elder posted this response here. Jude 7 says, Don't forget Sodom and Gomorrah and their neighboring towns, which were filled with immorality and every kind of sexual perversion. Those cities were destroyed by fire and serve as a warning of the eternal fire of God's judgment. So people are pointing out Ezekiel 1649, which is in the Old Testament, but here this elder is pointing out Jude 7 in the New Testament, which does talk about Sodom and Gomorrah being judged for sexual perversion, it says here. So I wanted to dig a little deeper into this and, and really kind of understand what's going on here in Ezekiel. And I'm actually going to be reading from the New Revised Standard Version because one of the arguments people will make is, well, maybe your translation is just an evangelical translation that's biased. So I'm using the New Revised Standard Version, which is not an e evangelical translation, really. It's more of an ecumenical translation. So you couldn't really say it has an evangelical bias to it. And here is what Ezekiel 16 49 says, this was the guilt of your sister Sodom. She and her daughters had pride, excess of food, and prosperous ease, but did not aid the poor and needy. So that's pretty much what we read before from the New International Version. But I also want you to note verse 50, the next verse. It says, they were haughty. So again, talking about pride here, that's another word for pride. They were haughty and did abominable things before me. Therefore, I removed them when I saw it. So it says they were haughty and did abominable things. Now that's where it gets interesting because it's not just talking about not aiding the poor and needy, although that was a problem. They were very proud, lived in ease, and didn't care for the poor. But it also says that they did abominable things. And if you look up this word, I have it here at Blue Letter Bible. It says they were haughty and committed abominations. So I'm looking up that word abominations and it's toeva. Toeva is the Hebrew word for abominations there. And it's really interesting because if you go to the Old Testament law in Leviticus, 
One of the laws you see here is you shall not lie with a male as one lies with a female. It is an abomination. And if you look up that word in Leviticus, it's that same word, toeva. So that idea of abomination in Ezekiel chapter 16, they committed abominations, certainly in the Jewish mind would include things like homosexuality. That's really the same word that's used for homosexuality in Leviticus chapter 18. So I think this shows you a lot of things as you look into this. One of the things that it shows you is that Twitter definitely has a lot of bias to it. And you're going to hear a lot of things on Twitter that are not very objective points of view. But a, but a really important thing here is to know that when you hear people talk about scripture, a lot of times people do very bad exegesis. Exegesis is where you're trying to draw out the meaning of the text. Eisegesis is where you're reading meaning into the text. You're kind of reading into the text. What we, we want to do is exegesis, really drawing out what the text actually is saying. And that's why I did that little study there to show that, yes, when you look at Ezekiel, there's more than just what it says there in verse 49 about not caring for the poor and needy. It also talks about them committing abominations. And then in the New Testament, again, looking at Jude verse 7, this is the New Revised Standard Version. It says, likewise, Sodom and Gomorrah and the surrounding cities which in the same manner as they indulged in sexual immorality and pursued unnatural lust serve as an example by undergoing a punishment of eternal fire. So when you look at the whole of scripture, when you look at scripture in context and you look at everything that it says, it's clear that Sodom and Gomorrah was judged, yes, for their pride, for their lack of care for others, but also for their sexual immorality. So there are lessons to be learned about this, about people not really interpret, interpreting scripture accurately and making sure we're careful when we listen to what people are saying online and really make sure that we don't just buy into the first thing that we hear. We really need to study things carefully. But also I think it shows that we, we tend to want to pick and choose. And I do think depending on your own point of view, it is easy to discount certain things that God is pointing out. So does God want us to care for the poor and the needy? There are some people who downplay that too much. And they would say, well, that's not really a, a big sin if you don't care for the poor and needy. But clearly that is one of the things that God says is a sign of the bad problematic attitude of the people of Sodom and Gomorrah. They didn't really care for those who were in need. So that is important. On the other hand, some people would discount the sexual immorality. They don't want to look at that. And that's why you see some people posting Ezekiel 16.49, but not posting Ezekiel 16.50 or Jude verse 7, because they want to focus on what it says about the poor and needy, but they're not focusing on what God says about sexual immorality. So that's another thing I think is important to remember in all of this, is that we not only need to make sure we understand what scripture is actually saying, but we need to make sure that we include everything and not write off the things that we don't want to hear or ignore the things that we would rather not pay attention to. We need to take it all into account. And that's really something that can cause all of us to examine ourselves and really look at how am I approaching things in this world? And am I really listening to everything God says? There might be something that that person needs to pay more attention to, but there might be something else that I need to pay more attention to. What I draw from all this is how much Sodom and Gomorrah, when you get that biblical description, really does sound a lot like America in many ways. Uh, it talks about pride, and we can have so much problem with pride and materialism but also talking about sexual immorality, and America certainly has problems with that. So anyway, I just wanted to clarify some things there, do this little, little scriptural study to speak into how people are interpreting what the Bible says about Sodom and Gomorrah, and share some of my thoughts on this. I'd love to hear what you think in the comments section below, but thank you so much for taking some time to look at this subject with me from a fresh perspective.